This is Adam Gorney, the National Recruiting Director at Rivals, here with a special guest today, new Texas Tech coach, Joey McGuire. And Joey, uh, I think it was eight or nine years ago, uh, Cedar Hill held a, camp, a Rivals camp there, and you came in and opened the gate. And uh, I like to think that we had a part in this, <laughs> this success journey you for did. you. You <laughs> did, man. I promise you. What were those days like, uh, being a high school coach for so long? It's a special thing in Texas. It's almost like right. a, a college or pro job in Texas. Yeah. Well, you know, that was kind of, it's funny you say that was because in the interview process, I kind of went through the deal as far as, you know, I was in charge of two middle schools, a freshman campus and a high school campus and, you know, 32 full-time staff members. And so it's kind of one of the, the size part of it. You know, some 6A schools are bigger than most uh, Power 5 programs when you're talking about the number of athletes and the number of coaches and staff members that you're working with. So, I think that helped me prepare a little bit for this. Yeah. When I watched your introductory press conference, I got the sense that this isn't just the next job. This isn't a stepping stone job. This is yeah. the destination job. And how important is that to you and kind of providing that message to the recruits as they come on campus that you're, you plan to be here, like you said, until you die? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing that will help when recruiting is they'll see uh, a person genuinely excited about where they're at and that they're not looking anywhere else, you know, and, and I really do feel that way whenever, I mean, this is a dream job for me, you know, and I think some people, I've never been a part of that. So I guess it's just, uh, I've been really blessed to be and, and lucky to be where I've been for so many years. You know, I'm the unicorn of coaching. I feel like I've been four places and, and uh, now going on 28, the spring will be 29. And so usually where I get places, I just try to build, you know, dig in, build roots and, and be excited about where you're at. But this is definitely like, it's always been a place that I wanted to be. And so I'm going to see if I can be here. I'm, I don't know if I ever plan to retire after COVID, you know, I didn't like sitting at home. And so hopefully I'm uh, around for a long time. Yeah. I don't get the impression that uh, taking a vacation or sitting around and then not being around people is exactly what you want to do. But that's an interesting point. You look at a Sam Pittman, who's been at, you know, a ton of places as he's developed into what he's been or, or many others and not, not, not being critical. It's just rare that you've had the, I guess, luck that you haven't right. had to have moved everywhere. What, what has that been like that you haven't had to have done that to, to progress in your career like that? Well, you know, uh, it's funny. My wife always says most of the wives are like shocked that we had a house for 22 years, you know, and, right. and, you know, my kids went from elementary school through high school uh, like that, you know, but it's getting, I think a little bit getting with the right people, having the yeah. right mentors and then just building the culture where you're at. Um, you know, uh, of course, I think once I got into college, I started getting an itch. I'll never forget. I, was, I actually was talking to Coach Blankenship at Owasso uh, yesterday, and he said, I remember when you came in my office in 2017, and you were so fired up about being at Baylor. And But he told me, he said, look, you're going to get the itch to because you're a leader of men. And so we were laughing about that yesterday because, uh, you know, I still remember that. And, you know, I, I was with great people at Baylor, but I had the itch, you know, really early to be back in and have my own program. Yeah. Matt Rule, obviously an important part of the coaching tree here for you. He said to, to Yahoo Sports, he said about you, he said, I think he's one in a million. The biggest winners in all this are the players at Texas Tech. There's no one more committed to helping young people and developing them as players. He's exactly who I'd want my kids to be coached by. How important is that to hear from him and for that message for someone like him now in the NFL, right. obviously had tremendous success at Baylor in a very quick time to just hear that about you and what you're going to be able to do there? Well, you know, it's extremely humbling because I've never been around anybody like him. I think he's the smartest. I mean, I, he's the smartest guy I've ever been around. And the great thing about him, he's not like a lot of people. You don't know it. He's very humble. Um, you don't know it until you <laughs> – you don't know it until you get something wrong. That he's like, he already knows the answer to the question he's asking you. Um, but he's my guy. You know, I, I mean, literally, I talk to him every day. I mean, I've already talked to him this morning. Um, as soon as I got into work, he was my first call last night. I mean, he's such a great mentor. And the day that I walked in the door at Baylor, he knew 
uh, that I wanted to be a head coach. So he just poured into me. But any parent, that last part, any parent that will say they would entrust their child to you, uh, I mean, that could be the you know greatest statement for anybody um, to say that because, you know, we all love our kids and, you know, we're so protective. And for him to say that, you know, he wants me to be able to coach Bryant, and, and that's my guy anyway. I'd, I'd love to, uh, you know, it, it means a lot to me. What are the, what were the first few weeks like for you? I mean, is just take me behind the scenes of what a new coach has to deal with. Are you, you know, moving out of a house, getting to Lubbock, getting kind of right knee deep into what the right. roster looks like, what a game day experience looks like, how, you, how you're watching film what what is what are the first few weeks like? When do you get to the office? When do you get home? How how is how does that all work for you? Well, luckily I have a rock star coach's wife, <laughs> and right. so she handles the you know she not the actual physical act of moving, but you know that's one of those deals. She actually kidnapped me the other day, and she goes, "You have to see uh, the house. Like if this is where we're gonna live, you actually have to see it." And I'm like, "Debbie, I don't need to see it. Just right. tell me where we're gonna." <laughs> Just tell me where I'm going to sit on the back porch to decompress. That's all I need to know. Um, but, you know, she's been awesome with that. For me, you know, it started with, uh, you know, meeting the players. I mean, as fast as I could set up schedules around their class schedule to get one-on-ones and let them know who I am and, and you know, what I want to be and and calling the, the commits and, and then getting on the recruiting trail as fast as possible, um, that was the biggest deal. You know, I, I don't – you know, there's probably a lot of people that have huge egos, but once again, this is a player's game. If you don't understand that, if you don't have the right people around you player-wise, then, uh, you know, you might think you put the laces in the football, but guess what? It really doesn't matter um, if you don't have the right players. So that was the very first thing I did. And then it's a little bit different because I'm not coaching the team. Um, I asked the, the people here, man, get me wherever you need me to be to be around our fans. And so I've been to Midland and Houston and going to Dallas uh, next week. Of course, we'll be able to contact period start. So I'll be recruiting in Dallas and then be able to meet a bunch of our boosters and fans. But, you know, that's kind of it. But it all started with, you know, the players been able to watch two games. So really evaluation. I mean, it's going to mm -hmm. sound crazy, but even evaluating our game day. I don't know how much say I'll have into it, but like just what goes on during the game, what comes on the message board, the music being played, everything like that. You know, I mean, I definitely think that that uh, Jones AT&T is a tough place to play, but we've got seven home games next year. And I want to make sure it is the toughest place to play in the nation. So we're going to we're going to make sure we're on point in everything that we do. You said uh, that you plan for Texas tech to be the Texas high school coaches university. Right. And, and that's definitely a, a, you know, a unique pitch. And I think one that can have a lot of success. You're a Texas high school football coach. Leveraging those relationships is definitely going to be an important part of recruiting and, and bringing Texas tech into the community. Was that the vision there to have sort of an open door policy? With, without a doubt. I saw the, t to me, um, and of course I'm going to brag on coach rule again, but to me, two guys that have done it the best <clears throat> in the state are Mac Brown, who's a dear friend of mine and, and Matt rule. And they, from day one had an open door policy, you know, you, Hey, and I tell all the guys, Hey, if you want to be up here, any practice, anything, you shoot me a text, if you want to sit in meetings. I mean, anything that those guys want to do, because, Two things. One, it's going to help us. But bigger than that, I believe in coaches. And any way that I can pour into a coach to help them be better and help them reach their goals, you know, I'm going to do. You know, this game has given me everything, you know, everything that's that's happened in my life from a player to a coach. And so I want to make sure I'm giving back. So it's going to be an open door policy for the guys in Texas and, and it really any high school coach that wants to come to Lubbock and, and check us out. I think we we can't talk about specific commits or recruits, but I think we've seen in the first few weeks, it's no secret that Texas is going to be the focus. I mean, you're going right. to try to win the state of Texas when you recruit. It's going to start in Lubbock and spread west, west Texas and then the state. Obviously, a ton of competition. 
in the state, people coming from outside the state to come in. But there are tons of players in the state that right. everybody can almost have their fill. Is that kind of the recruiting focus that we're going to recruit Texas and we're going to win with Texas kids? It is, you know, um, and, you know, I always kind of throw in the bordering states because a lot of times I'm like, you know, there's the Oklahoma kids that, that yeah. are, they're playing great football there. And so, um, but it is, it's going to start in what you said it perfectly. It's going to start in West Texas to make sure that the guys that are supposed to, they're going to play power five football. They're playing it in the red and black. I mean, you got to think they've probably grown up and this is the place that they came to watch college football. So I want to make sure that they, have a home here and then, you know, work our way out. But, you know, that's kind of my wheelhouse. I mean, being a Texan and, and being a Texas high school coach for so long, I think that we have great relationships around the state. Uh, it definitely helps that I was on the board of directors of the THSCA. So I met so many great coaches from around the state uh, and they know who I am and how I'm going to treat their kids and uh, how I'm going to take care of them. So I think that's huge, you know, and, um, I, I, I'm excited too that you know that last part you said we got competition from outside the state because uh, you know for whatever reason I don't believe this but for whatever reason so many people have said it's hard to recruit to West Texas you know and I made a great I thought it was a really good point to the commentators the other day in the game that well if you're going to Stillwater it's from Houston it's 505 miles and it's 520 miles to Lubbock so you're talking about 20 miles and everybody says it's so hard to get out here. Well, I know there's direct flights from Houston to Lubbock, but I don't think there's direct flights to other places. And right. so, you know, I kind of am going to use that to our advantage of some of the kids that, Oh, you're going to go out of state. Well, you know, it's eight hours to drive there versus it's five here. Oh, there's not a direct flight there, but there is a direct flight here. Sure. You know, Hey, we're going to use weather maps too. You know, I, I know that, it's going to get a little cold out here in West Texas, but it's not going to snow and be cloudy, you know, 50 to 60 percent time that you're somewhere else in in another state. I know you won't say it, but I think that's Ames, Iowa. And then <laughs> that's interesting. And maybe maybe other places too. Uh, developing a staff. <clears throat> What's your philosophy on that? It may be more art than science, but bringing in a guy like James Blanchard with NFL experience is obviously a huge get. Huge. Huge. Starting with a director of scouting that you've already gotten, uh, a guy who has um, relationships with Oklahoma and Texas high schools. Was that kind of the idea to start that way? It, you know, it was. And, and it's probably a little bit like most people probably start with their staff, which I have that, too. It's just that we're still playing. So you can't, sure. you know, you can't announce guys and stuff like that or yeah. out of respect to their teams. We're definitely not going to do that, you know. Um, and so I thought that was important, but I will tell you, I probably wouldn't have got on the plane without James Blanchard. Uh, I think he's one of the brightest, um, guys in this business. I think he's an incredible evaluator. It goes back to the guys that he learned from. I mean, he was already doing a great job on his own, but being with Matt rule and, and Evan Cooper, you know, Cooper's coops, one of the best evaluators I've ever been around. And so that part, and then him going to the NFL and seeing, um, you know, what you're looking for in drafts and uh, sure. different people that have been drafting, different people, free agents, stuff like that. And then he made such great connections with different scouts from, you know, he can pick up the phone and call a scout from 32 teams and say, hey, this is what everybody's saying about this guy. And it's going to help us. You know, we're going to be honest and upfront with our kids. And I'm going to be the first one to tell a kid, if you can be a millionaire, if you can get drafted, you know, first, second, third round, I want you to go get drafted. Yeah. I want you to get, you know, and I think a lot of coaches necessarily might not do that. They might uh, be thinking about bringing them back, you know, because it helped their team. But in the long run, it's going to help our team that those guys go where they're supposed to go when they're supposed to go. You said the other day, and last question here, Joey, you said we're going to be the toughest, hardest working competitive team in the country. Yep. More of a philosophical question here. Can you build that from the team you have, or is that – do you have to recruit to that? Or um, is it maybe a mix of both? It's a mix of both, but I definitely yeah. think we can build it from the team we have. You know, I just – I told all the guys, like, tough people do tough things, and if you're not very tough, the only way I know to get tough is to do tough things. 
And so I said, we're going to have a blast in the off season, but it's going to be extremely tough. You know, um, I'm a big, big fan of David Goggins. I've read his book and read a couple of different books of people that have been with him and watch him all the time. And, you know, it's, he talks about callous in the mind and the body and, and uh, we're definitely going to do that out here and uh, starting in January, February, March, and lead all the way through to week one and, and uh, you know, put a team on the field that that likes to hit and, uh, you know, is not afraid to get hit. And and uh, be, But the biggest thing we're going to do is is we're going to have a, a great team that care about each other. I think you can be tough and, and whenever it comes to if you really love each other and care about each other, you're also a lot tougher. And fans should believe you. We're gonna they're gonna play defense in Lubbock now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're gonna play defense. I, hey, I'm a defensive guy. I've been around de- great defensive minds, and uh, you know I think uh, when it's all said and done, the guy that we bring in here, um, we're gonna I'm gonna help him get guys to run the football like their hair's on fire, and and uh, we're gonna play defense in Lubbock. Great, great. Again, this is new Texas Tech coach Joey McGuire with Adam Gorney for Rivals.com.